the elusive. That cerulean blue refuses to come, won't paint itself into these words. The particular shade, a faded denim sea washed, misted out of landscape photos, old women's laundered blue dresses, a door in a dream, the gate glaze on a fish, or the rim of a bow, a most important blue, the past almost captured. Um, the next one is called Ex Libris, and it's told in the persona of a discarded book. So you're listening to the voice of a book all the way through. Ex Libris. I'm at the bookshop now, solace impossible at the bottom of a box. I miss my place in the library, calm and dusted, rubbing covers with a hundred others, their stories and gossip. Print by breakfast <coughs> molecules, ink atoms dry but driven, proton, quick electron, the spinning heart of the matter, my fellow volumes loud even on the shelf. I miss <coughs> my friend, running <coughs> her ringed fingers over our spines, choosing by braille, smudging sunstruck edges, caressing covers, sniffing pages as though she would eat us. She's chosen me, fresh and tight, many nights more than the others, slipped her fingers <coughs> under my covers, never bumped my tips. Skylights have, skylarks have flown all over her sheets, fluttered at windows. Now to austere in my pale blue covers, linen spine, I'm ready to be dog-eared, foxed, tossed in a green bag with notes, books, pens, ready to be taken apart, my small explosions pondered, continued. <coughs> I admit to being shaken now, my end papers chipped, how I long for a person to carry me up, open my body, let sparrow box out. <coughs> um, it's great to be here in Cork and um, thanks for inviting me. I uh, searched around for something that would be located in County Cork, and um, this one was inspired by childhood visits to our uh, cousins in Chanagari. It's called At the Seaside, Then and Now. Where are they, those tables, the vertebrae of whales washed up on Ballinamona Strand? And where are the knives we used to find? Razor sharp shells, black blue, strewn by the sea. And where are plates, oysters pearl glazed, carefully placed with seaweed meals? All eaten. In our sleep we have eaten the tables, the knives, and the plates. Uh, next is Peace Treaty, and the epigraph is a translation from the Magna Carta, which was written over 800 years ago, um, and the, it goes something like this, All fish weirs shall be removed. Peace Treaty. Come, step into the disused water meadow, overgrown by water mint and meadow sweet. We'll write our vows of peace in oak gall ink, on lime white parchment near the great yew tree. Let no fears foreshadow the next 800 years held in a hollow quill from the goose or the swan's left wing. <coughs> but link forwards from then to the phosphor screen and plastic key. Hear that we still must dismantle those weirs, unravel the gill nets, ban echo locators, Allow fish and more for every person, otter and heron. No fear, no war, no silver bombers, harriers. Let fly the larks trapped under our scarves to sing for peace in 800 years and now. This is called single-handed, and um, in the fourth section, there are some map coordinates. Um, these locate Bikini Atoll, um, which up until 1958 was a bomb testing site. Sing
single-handed. My boat's been at sea so long, I'm starving, can't eat these sandwiches pinned to my sleeve, cucumbers over my eyes. What's in your pocket? Holly berry, hook and line, a folded car in the shape of a whale. In archaeological terms, no magic coin, and in the heart of the sea, the turtle, this box. We will be luminous in our tattered gear, boating across oceans, where our lips afford the sweetest tasting. Such thirst, our tongues, like hard foreign bodies, clank against our teeth. Though the sea hides most of our secrets, nobody sits in the white plastic chair on the jetty you'll find near 11 degrees north, 165 degrees east. My boat of bird feathers withstood many sharks, but today it leaks inexplicably. An octopus climbs in the scuppers and changes colour before we go down. I'll end um, with one in the voice of a Victorian woman, and she's laced up in a whalebone corset. Um, it's a lament and an apology to the whale, who um, she addresses as Bellina Bellina. Whalebone and silk. A shortage of breath brought on by compression of my collapsible ribs under your mouth parts, strongly moulding my waist and padded hips pressing upwards on my small breasts. Fingers fumble to undo my tight-laced bodice, release this whalebone cleavage. Unwound and harpooned, I faint, fall into the silk moth's boiling pot, into the North Sea turmoil of your flensing. Bellina, Bellina, forgive me, I forgot. No, I never knew how they got these stiffeners. Hooked, eyed and tight in my formal cocoon, no one can see me become a whale woman. <laughs>